Hello, welcome to Rectal for you. Today we're going to be building the Atari 2600 Uno car. Now this again is brought to you thanks by PCB Way. Thanks again guys for sending me these. They've also sent me some other goodies like the Kraken. I'll show you a picture here. Which actually just holds things etc. with about 20 arms etc. It's not 20, I'm over exaggerating. It's about 8. <coughs> but very handy things. We've also got some other boards to build and a not an Atari, to, I've got Atari on my mind. We've also got some other boards to build a Spectrum Harlequin, which is a Spectrum 128 clone. So look forward to that in future videos. Also at the end of the video, I'm gonna make a bit of an announcement as we've hit 400 subscribers, guys. So because of that, I'm gonna be making a bit of an announcement. So look out for that right at the end of the video, okay? It's worth the wait, honestly. And Basically, to build these, I've had to buy a new piece of equipment, which is basically a hot plate, which will allow me to solder these components, these very tiny components, a lot more easier. Because we're going to be building more things, obviously, we've got, still got the Amiga, re Amiga board to build, etc. So, join me after the short intro, and also a short word about our sponsor, and I will start to get this built. See you soon, guys. So it's a big thanks to this company here, PCB Way, for providing me with the boards. As you can see, they do all sorts of things. They do prototypes, assembly, HDI, CNC, machining, 3D printing, whatever you want they do basically. They're really good, really helpful and really fast. And the prices are great. I think it's, they start from as little as $5 for boards as you can see which is great. So thanks again for PCB Way. Be sure to give them a look up at pcbway.com and I shall see you after a short intro. Thanks guys. Okay, so I hope you can hear me. Today we're going to be building this. This is the uh, cart, the Uno cart. And I'm going to be building this hot plate. So first what we want to do is just tape it into place. So obviously I don't want to go over these pads. So I'm just going to put some tape over them. And the same as these pin holes here. Same again on this side. So the only place we want to paste is on the other pads which are around. I'm going to try doing this with a stencil sent to me from the wonderful people. You know it, PCB Way, and also this here, which is a scraper or squidger, squadger, whatever you want to call it. So we get this stencil. Now the stencil is humongous, as you can see, it's as big as me. So we just need to line this up, and then the job should be good. So basically we just need to line this stencil up, like so, and then squeeze some thermal paste on. And one line across there. Then use a squeegee. So basically squeegee it in place. Until it's all full. Try and do it every way this way so you can see on the camera. So you can see now that's all full and that'll be ready to lift off in a minute. Sorted. We should be able to take this off like so and you will see that all the pads have soldered on them. 
which is great. So what we need to do now is populate this board with the components. So just sit back, listen to some music while I populate this board and how very tiny these components are.
we're just going to look around this board now. It's cooled down. You can see the ones that have soldered have soldered on really nicely. Okay. Look at that. Lovely. All nice and straight as well. So there's all the capacitors soldered. Pins are fine there. These are soldered. Soldered, soldered, soldered. All good. It looks like this is soldered as well. I'm trying to look into there to see the pins. They're very difficult to see these pins there. But you can see down there, the actually pads are soldered. So it looks good. Lovely. Yeah, you can see the grounds are soldered there. Look at that. Lovely. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to sort out this and get this main chip fitted. First, what I'm going to do is apply some flux around here. So, I'm just going to flux it up like so. And then we're just going to run the iron along and get rid of them bridges. So just like so just make sure all the pads are tinted you can see along now we'll go along this side just stroking it with the iron and along this side finally the last side Bit of muck came off that then. There you go. So that is lovely, ready to go. So now what we need to do is we need to give that a clean off. With the old toothbrush. Uh, I need a cotton wool bud as well. And you'll see there's a dot in that corner. Now that dot lines up with a chip, which means a chip sort of goes on sideways, which is a bit. I don't want to be straightening any pins. I think one's got damaged in the post. So we're just going to clamp them together and put them back in the bag safe. So basically what we need to do is we need to turn this chip around and now this is the pain bit is trying to line it up. Well you might think it looks easy but it's not because the slightest bit of movement and it's off.
basically, we're going to be fitting these four pins here, basically. See them here? So I need to get four pins, cut them off, and just slot them in place and solder them. So I'm gonna hold that in place. We're gonna blob some solder paste around if I can find some. This is the one I'm after with a nozzle. And so we're just gonna put a bit of solder paste around each hole and get the iron. And just basically solder them in place. Like so. So that's our four pins done. We'll give that a clean up. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So thank you PCB Way again for these. Really handy these things are for holding my items. Now there is another three pin one we need to do here and that is basically for a jumper which lets NTSC or PAL. So that is just a three pin. Same again. We'll stick the pins through. Like so, we'll stick some soda paste on. And we will solder away. One, two, three. Not really soldered that well, but what we can do is we could just get some solder now to top them up. Like so. And I've just got my iron. Sorry guys. <laughs> right, so we'll clean that up. And now we should have a fully soldered Uno car. The next thing we need to do is to actually program this, this arm chip here. So we need to program this chip here and I'll show you how to do that next. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to program this. I've only done that so you can see. Obviously the cables are quite easy because they correspond from this to this. You've got <coughs> basically four cables to connect. You've got the 3.3 volt, the SWIO and the SWCL, SW click basically, CLK and also a ground. And obviously those correspond the pins on the USB so it's easy as peasy like I say so what we've got to do next is switch over to the software here's a software here it's called SM32 ST link utility this is easy to find online to download so basically what you got to do first is click on the ST link firmware update device connect and it didn't work if it does that basically what you got to do is unplug it Plug it back in. Okay, device connect. There you go. Check your version matches the latest version here, which is there and there, which it does, so you don't need to upgrade the firmware. Close this down. Now you can do it either way. I click connect, and that should, you can see it's full of F, so that's basically means it's blank. This is so it's connected, it's found the arm and it's connected and it's blank. So basically what I'll do next is target and automatic mode, file browse and select your firmware bin. Full chip arrays, flash programming, verify, blah, blah, blah. So just click start and it should go through the process. It's erasing the chip again. I guess this is just to be sure. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but this is the way I always do it, it seems to work. Now it's got a flash program and verify. 
So there you go, all done. That's it, easy peasy, done. So that's basically it for the software. It should load in now. It's a matter of loading some ROMs or backups or homebrew that you've got onto your SD card, slapping that SD card into the slot and basically pushing this into the 2600 and turn it on. You should have a menu system appear which you can use with joystick to load the games. I stick some ROMs onto an SD card in here and I'll just show you that working through the 2600. See you soon guys. Okay, so we've got the Atari hooked up. So it's hooked up to the video capture device, so we should be able to see it through the screen in a bit. I've got the Uno cart here we've just made. I haven't printed the actual shell, so we're just gonna have to just use a screwdriver to push the panel up. Now basically what we need to do so I've got a joystick connected because that's how you select it, is to just turn this on. As you can see we've got a blue light, which is a good sign. And I'm just going to transition to the video capture. So we got the 2600 hooked up to the video grabber. Apologies for the quality of the sound and the video. It isn't perfect. Sometimes the sound works, sometimes it doesn't. It's a cheap one from Amazon. I do intend to buy a more like superior one eventually, but it's just not on the books at the moment, but soon I'll get one, I promise. So at least I can show you the cart anyway. We'll power this thing on and we should be presented with a menu. <clears throat> also, I've been having issues with the Atari with the joystick where it's randomly selecting things on its own. So let's just hope it works now today, okay? So we can go down to setup. Here we've got display preferences, TV TV mode. <clears throat> you select NTSC, PAL, PAL 60. Also, we go back. This is what is important. We've got SD card content. Now, I've got folders on here. Just to show you folders work. I've done this as experiment. And I can go down to PAL, A to G, which is subfolders. And I'm hoping I can get to where I want to get. There you go. So I want to go down slightly to Berserk. Press the fire button and Berserk loads in. So you can see the game works, it's very fast. And I can start the game on the switch and we could start to play. You can see that it randomly fired on its own. I don't know what's going on with it. It Originally it started to fire constantly really fast. And basically I had to open the Atari up and short some pins out on this chip. I think it was pin nine and 10 and five and six. But since doing that, it's a bit intermittent, to say the least. So, I don't know what's going on. It's just, I'm going to have to sort it out. I think I need to get a replacement chip for it inside. I can't remember what chip it was, but we'll get one of them next time. I do like my Atari. And I'm just running into the wall, not concentrating. <coughs> so as you can see, it does work fine. I mean, if load another game you want, we just take one at random. And... Go to Space. Oh, the fox. I've never heard of any of these. Space War, Sprint Master, Star Gunner, Star Wars. Is that Star Wars? Oh, Star Trek. As you can see, that hasn't worked well. It's a video grabber again. Let's just select something else. I did tell you it was a bit hit and miss, didn't I? I think I went the wrong way anyway, by alphabet pal. My joystick seems to be behaving itself a bit more now, which is good. See, oh, there you go, basketball. Look at this. Boo! And I score. And he's going to get the ball. How do I get the ball off him? All right. <coughs> and I guess I run into it, do I? And it sticks to me. Look at that. What skill? Oh, it doesn't stick to me when I go that way. It's quite a fun game, actually. It'll be good on two players because it is a two player game. 
can't seem to get the ball off him. And my guy's jumping all the while. I guess it's because of the fire button again. So, let me just try one more score. Oh, I missed. Right. So, that's basically it for today. If you just hang around for the next few minutes, I'm going to be making an announcement at the end of the video. This is due to me hitting 400 subs, etc. So, I shall see you in a short while. See you soon. Hello, welcome back. Like I said, I've got a bit of an announcement. As we've hit 400 subscribers, amazing, I know, brilliant. I'm going to be giving away one of these Atari Uno cards. All you have to do is hit the like button on the video, the subscribe button if you're not subscribed, and comment below. Even if it's hello or a thank you or whatever, just comment below. And you will be in the chance of winning one of these. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'll give it till Friday the 10th, I think it is, of November. So that's two weeks' time. And in two weeks' time, everybody that's commented below and obviously hit the like button, etc., I will put all the names into a random wheel picker thing that will spin online. And I will pick a name out of random, and that winner will receive this cartridge, this one here. It should have a case printed as the black resin is on its way, so it should have a nice 3D printed case on it as well in resin. So, other than that, I shall see you next week. And if you're here for the first time, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. And there's plenty more stuff on the way. There's loads of projects. There's obviously a Spectrum board, like I said before, to build, a Amiga 1200 board to build got so many projects and Atari Lynx still to finish and Atari Jaguar is still somewhere down there to finish. The CDTV which obviously last time didn't work but I can tell you now made a big improvement on that and hopefully I think the video will be coming up next week on that to finish that series off. So I shall see you next time on Retro for you. Thanks again guys and good luck if you enter the competition to win this.